Wofford's CEO, Brent Beardall. Welcome back, Brent. Good to see you. Tyler, good to be here. You know, uh, not only were your earnings uh, higher than the estimates, 56 cents a share versus 49 cents, the thing that stood out to me, and you, and you said that the loan losses were insignificant, you, over the last year, generated 9% more in total loan volume and loan originations up 49% in the midst of a very difficult economy and a time when most of your employees, I'm sure, were working remotely. Yeah, th thank you for recognizing that. You know, in, in the midst of this pandemic, it was a choice. Uh, many banks chose to pull back, very nervous about what the economy would do. We chose to take the other path. We lent, we leaned in. We took the opportunity to take market share, and it's fairly remarkable. Last year was a record year for us. We had six billion of originations. This year, we're on pace for eight billion of originations. And as you point out, even with repayments uh, higher than they've ever been, We've grown our total portfolio by a billion dollars. Outstanding. L loan originations up 49 percent in a year. Who's borrowing? You know, it's it's this economy that it's the dichotomy, right? We have so many of our clients that are doing so very, very well. Uh, one thing I hope we'll talk about is the surge in deposits, right? We've seen so many people because of this fiscal stimulus. Those that started off well off are doing even better, and those are the ones that are borrowing. They're taking advantage of the opportunities, uh, whether it be multifamily projects, whether, whether it be new manufacturing facilities, or just to refinance old debt because of what the Federal Reserve has done with interest rates. And you yourself have retired some, uh, some old debt, didn't you? We did. We, we took advantage. And we also went out and we issued uh, $500 million, or excuse me, $300 million of perpetual preferred stock at less than 5%. And for a bank, we view that as roughly half our cost of capital. Half the cost of capital. Let's talk a little bit about that question of deposits, which is very interesting to me. You know, there has been a lot of talk that people were that people were going to take uh, the the federal money and they were going to uh, they were going to spend it, which some of them have on on necessities. And there was a lot of talk that people were going to put it in uh, the stock market. I don't think that's really happened. But one place they have put it is into bank accounts, right? They sure have. The FDIC just came out with uh, an announcement that. The loan to deposit ratio is just hit its all time low at 53 percent. So if you think about that, you know, banks are in business to take in deposits and lend it out. And only roughly half of those deposits are lent out. So there is all kinds of pent up supply for our consumers and businesses to grow their mm -hmm. balance sheets. You operate in, is, is it eight Western, mostly Western states, from Texas all the way up to Washington State. You've had the benefit of very good real estate markets, particularly in the Northwest, particularly around Seattle, uh, as you and I know. Do you see that persisting? I, I do. It's, it's simply supply and demand, and demand is so high right now, and supply has never been uh, more limited. And so I, I think real estate values will continue to go up over time. Certainly there could be a correction. I think the number was 14 percent nationally year over year in, in values. So there could be a mild correction. But longer term, I'm bullish on our eight western states. There's going to be net immigration into the states where we're at and we're, we're investing appropriately. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.